be you know, the president of a group that they they kicked him out of now. But oh, but that kind of makes sense. Kinda, <laughs> all right, he just kind of flat out, no, uh, uh-uh, we are not moving. 10, 20 minutes, uh, your time is lapsing, we're losing time, mm-hmm. and another group came up behind them. Well, now there are so many, I don't even know. I was on radio communication with those, that second group. So it really came down to, there was fit, you know, try to call the police to come, but hey, we've got to get off this trail, we've got to get off this trail safe. It is a beautiful Friday. Fridays are great days because that means it's the weekend. You know, even if you're working the weekend, uh, whether it's uh, for business or uh, doing something for pleasure, like working on your, on your Jeep or taking your Jeep off-road, all of that really wouldn't be working, would it? Uh, it's still, Friday is a great day. Everybody gets excited about Friday. I think it's built into us uh, about uh, a five-day work week. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, just get excited. It's still Friday. It doesn't matter what's going on this week. Weekend. It's Friday. So I'm Tony and welcome to the Jeep Talk Show, the talk show where we talk about all things Jeep from trail riding to overlanding and everything in between. Now, if you're new to off-roading or a seasoned veteran, there are certain things you should always keep in mind before you hit the trails. And we're going to give you a few of those on every episode of the Jeep Talk Show. So sit back, grab a cold one, and get ready for another great guest right here on the Jeep Talk Show. Are you ready? It's time for the Jeep Talk Show with hosts Tony, Josh, Wendy, and Chuck. You know, it is payday and time to become a Patreon subscriber. See what I did there? Remember last payday when you promised yourself to throw a little scrap to the Jeep Talk Show for all the fun and information you get? Hmm? Hmm? Well, it's it's time now, damn it. <laughs> you get ad-free content, early access, discount codes for companies and stuff you want, and so much exclusive content. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact, not content, contact, and look for the Patreon logo at the top of the page. Subscribe now. Hey, big thanks to Julianne of Wrangle Hers and Wendy of Trails 411 uh, uh, for the uh, and also to the Jeep Talk Show. Uh, they now are doing a fifth episode for the Jeep Talk Show. It's a Monday episode. It's called Chick Chat. It is a woman centric episode uh, run by women hosts. Chick Chat episodes come out on every other Monday. You'll hear from women talking to women about things we all love jeeps yes it's for men also so don't feel feel guilty about listening (laughs) from around the world or from your city and sometimes just down the street howdy neighbor it's the jeep talk show interview Adio, boys and girls, it's time for another Jeep Talk Show interview, and tonight we're going to be talking with Jeff Foley. He is a professional Jeep trail guide. Oh, I know. Don't you hate him already? I mean, could you imagine doing that for a living? Uh, I'm sure it's not all uh, wine and roses, though. Based in Cincinnati, he leads uh, rides across the U.S. collecting Jeep badges of honor. Jeff, thank you a lot for being with us tonight, and uh, do you have all the Jeep badges of honor? Well, we got a pretty good run of them going this last year this last year was pretty busy we got uh, 42 i believe it was we went after last year there's a lot of them uh this year a little bit slower uh but uh there's like 26 events last year so i'm just just one guy doing all this and my one jeep so it's, it's a lot on me That's oh i bet for sure a lot of miles on the uh, the jeep or is it more than one vehicle that you drive it's just this this old girl right here she's got 211,000 miles on her I put two engines in it already. <laughs> and, she keeps going. And, That's all that matters. And uh, assuming it's a Jeep, uh, what uh, what Jeep um, a year, make, model, etc. is it? It's a 2007 Jeep JKU. The first year they made that uh, four door, and uh, it's it's been heavily modified. I, I give them that. They, they built it up pretty good, so now it's just a matter of maintaining and repairing what I what I break. So it's a it's a, a three point eight uh, that's in there, which may explain why you've uh, replaced the engine. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. The first <laughs> owner had it. Oh, I think he only had it maybe sixty thousand miles, and it, uh, the engine went out into the neighborhood, I believe. And I bought it, put one in, and then I just put another one in this past summer. Yeah, 
they have some issues with it. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> but, but it is what it is. That's neat Keep that you're. Going. That's neat that you're uh, continuing with it though, and uh, and just changing out engines. Do you have it done, or do you do it yourself? Um, this past year, I had Weeds Off Road do it, and uh, down by Bedford, Indiana, and uh, oh, I was great. It was between my rides. That's the thing about my repairs. I had so many rides last year. I'm trying to kind of space them out a little bit better this year, but so many rides that when I would break something or have something down, I, I mean, I have a short window. It's like, can you get me in? I mean, we're talking, can you do an engine in, in a few days and then get me back out there? And uh, sure enough, Mark, we, he got it put in there and uh, sent us off to, uh, right after that, to Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion and then Colorado a few weeks after that. So they get it done. That's great. There, there are just so many little things, uh, attention to detail that has to be done uh, when swapping an engine. Did you, did you find anything that was uh, that was missed, or maybe not a hundred percent on it, or was it uh, installed and driving, and you haven't had any any other issues related to the install? Yeah, no issues. Uh, my last engine, which has been about four years ago, uh, since then till now, I've always had this little quirk. I mean, Jeeps are nothing but quirks anyway. Right. But uh, check engine light, <laughs> he doesn't ignore it. It's always been a little bit funny, and I kind of learned how to get around it and, and do what I need to do with it. So, this past engine replacement, he replaced the computer, and oh, finally, finally it actually drives like it should. <laughs> oh, After good. all these years I've been putting up with it, <laughs> now it's finally perfect. <laughs> so, the, the, computer yeah. had, the computer had an issue to, with it, I would assume? Yes, yeah, as a computer, uh, when I would start it up, it would uh, it would sputter a little bit, and what it was doing, it was not reading the oxygen sensors. Ah. So, when they put it in last time, they said it might happen, and, and they thought it was a computer, but they weren't sure. The place I did it last time was where I'm in, I work for full-time for refrigeration and commercial air conditioning, and where we do our vans, and that's where I had my first engine put in about four or five years ago. So I was just a local shop to where half time it's an off road shop. We knew way better what he's doing and and did everything else that we needed to do and now it works perfect. So mm-hmm. you've got a lot of miles on it. I wish I had the money because I would love to have a auto repair uh, shop, which I'm sure would be a, a, a money losing proposition, but it would be only Jeeps. And when I say only Jeeps, I don't mean the, the fake Jeeps. I mean like uh, uh, Wrangler, uh, CJ, YJ, TJ, XJ, uh, and people would argue that that's a fake Jeep. Uh, I don't. I love XJs. And uh, of course, the the Gladiator, it would be really nice to have uh, techs that were uh, very experienced with uh, with Jeeps, and uh, people would come and drop off their Jeep and and and, and have all the subtle nuances that would be um, you know uh, taken care of on on the Jeep. Because uh, you, you you take a Jeep to somebody, then they may be a very good mechanic, but they're going to miss some some little something uh, that's uh, very unique to the Jeep. And it's it's strange too because Jeeps are really very simple. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yes, and having a shop that has since that's all they do is just Jeeps. They'll tend to have extra parts. You use things here and there if you need the you know extra things to put in. Yours just to get your school in, but but even brand new parts. I mean that that's all they do. So mm-hmm. They have a lot of good stuff. Yes, I agree with that. That's that's a good way to have a shop that way. So let me ask you this: on your Jeep uh, that uh, that you take on these uh, these trail rides, uh, is it uh, has it been modified? I mean, I'm looking at a picture. Uh, I believe it's it's a guy wearing a kilt, and you can't figure that. I mean, you, you can't uh, think there's too many guys out there wearing kilts. I know Greg here Anderson, right. uh, unofficial use only, uh, wears a kilt, and uh, uh, he's a fun guy, and it, unrelated to the kilt. Uh, <laughs> and got to meet Greg out there at uh, EJS. We were talking a little bit about EJS uh, uh, prior, which I believe you actually saw the 2021 Jeep Talk Show Gladiator out there. Oh, yes, I sure did. I'm almost certain I saw it on Hell's Revenge. That, uh, I can almost name, see right where it was, too. That would be it's Friday, because uh, 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 I think it was almost the entire Jeep Talk Show team that was uh, went to Hell's Revenge on Friday. I was actually supposed to be at the Tyree Lights booth on Friday, and I uh, I called Ken. I said, Ken, I'm sorry. I haven't been on many trails. I can't believe how fast the week went by. It was just, just flying by, and uh, I think I did a total of like... Uh, 
three trails while I was out there. And uh, yeah, definitely got to go back next year. But uh, I'm sold. I didn't want to drive that uh, that whole 19 hours there and 19 hours back, but uh, 100% worth it. Uh, and, and it's just worse for you, isn't it? Uh, I totally agree. I mean, I wish my work weeks would go that fast. <laughs> yeah, we went uh, last year, and uh, we did pretty much the cheap badge of honor. That this seems to be a real good thing that people like to get, and a little badge. It's, it's kind of interesting, and it does give you some of the best trails around. Mm-hmm. But I mean, also, when we go to these locations with those trails, we do everything else in the park, too. Sure. But uh, so we went last year and mostly did that. So we this year, we said, well, I'll tell you what, that was fun last year. Let's just double our fun. So we went for two weeks this past year. We did one week during EJS. And we did all scenic, uh, just some of the amazing overlooks, uh, dinosaur tracks, all the history and, and geology. I mean, it's just so amazing, some of the stuff we got to see. And then the second week was all the G badge of honors plus other trails too. It was kind of cool. We kind of got uh, the best of both worlds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, just two weeks out there would be great. Oh, absolutely, yes, because then we got to see a lot of stuff, too. We got to, the weekend between the two rides, we got to go out and play a little bit, too. So, 2024, we're going back, and uh, this one's going to be kind of a mix of both of them. Mm-hmm. So, it was kind of fun to get our, our BLM permit again, and, and we're we're sold out there, too. We, we love going out there, so so nice. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, getting back to your your Jeep, uh, obviously, uh, if this is the, the if the picture I'm looking at is your Jeep, which it looks to be like a, a black Jeep with a uh, yes. s- somewhat of a flag wrap on on the side, right? It's obviously been modified. Is that uh, are those forties or forty twos or yes, so, yes, those are forties. Yeah, forties. They uh, put the Terraflex and Moto Belt was the two main ones at the beginning. So uh, Terraflex lift. And the long arms and uh, the front axle is a Terraflex heavy duty 44 axle. So I got the 35 spline sh- shafts in there. Oh, very way nice. Stronger. Yeah. And uh, as, so far, it's been perfect on the front. The rear has a, a regular 44 off a Rubicon. Uh, it's been trussed and, and gussed up. And uh, that has a 35 spline in there, too, obviously. But so far, it's good. I mean, this. Way extra weight, you know, with your ball joints and bearings, but it's just the life of having a big, big, heavy Jeep. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. killing my trailer, too. It's so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you haven't uh, had any problems on the trail with it. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, you've replaced the, the motor a couple of times, but the, the, the rest of the rig's been good for you. Right. It's <laughs> probably the worst thing was uh, karma. We were down... Uh, at Windrock, and uh, I was with my sponsor at that time, and and we had just put 40s on it. So we were on trail 16, and I made it up the hardest section, and I, I was leading it, and I got on the radio and got a little bit silly and you know, kind of showed off a little bit, and literally 20 feet later, I broke the front knee joint. So <laughs> it was kind of karma coming back on me. <laughs> Better shut my mouth and be happy. But otherwise, no, no, no. Well, that's a that's a good inexpensive that's a good inexpensive fuse. So breaking a U joint, although you don't like breakage, it's uh, relatively simple to replace and uh, relatively inexpensive. Right. One of my things I've always kind of prided myself on is I I don't do the most extreme trails. Uh, most of the time, we're all medium stuff, and my lines. And I've been doing this quite a long time, and I'm just I'm kind of known as a, a slow, just slow crawl into. I definitely take care of my Jeep on the trail. So, I mean, all the stuff we did last year, and just, you know, ball joints, an engine, but stuff like that. Is, I mean, I granted, no engine is three major, so we're good. But it's just kind of good well, to have the 3.8. Yeah, that's really the goes back to the three point, the whole 3.8 saga. Uh, right. Not so much. It's right. not a it's not a Jeep engine. I mean, it, certainly Chrysler used it uh, many many vehicles, but uh, uh, yeah. So it, like that, like I was saying, it's just understandable. Uh, whenever you told me the year, I figured, oh, that's a that's a 3.8 issue. It's not saying that uh, a three six or or any of the other uh, engines that uh, Jeep uses don't don't have problems from time to time. Uh, but uh, yeah, the uh, if you if you guys don't know, the three point eight is a is a known issue. Uh, so much so that I would uh, probably not purchase uh, myself. I probably would not purchase a Jeep that had a three eight in it. It's just uh, I think it's just something uh, 
I think there's a, like a 30% chance that you're going to have problems with it. So there's the, but that means there's a 60, uh, 66% chance that it's going to be just fine. <laughs> right. Yeah, both of them, they started burning oil a little bit too much. Yeah. And it kind of rebuilt, but at that point, it was just cheaper to put a Jasper rebuilt with a 100,000 mile warranty on it. So I uh, just cheaper throw a new engine in it. Yeah, you got to change. Yeah, you got to change so many things if you go to change the engine because you got to worry right. about transmission, uh, uh, perhaps uh, the uh, the transfer case, etc. Uh, was that a Rubicon uh, that that you're that you're using? I mean, was that the the a Rubicon before you started this adding stuff actually, to it? This is actually a Sahara. And so, uh, right. so did you add lockers to it? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, we have air lockers in it, so front and rear, and uh, yeah. It, Every since then, it's been it's been perfect. Yeah, just little things here and there, which you know, it's an older Jeep, so it, it needs a little love. That's all. I like the the building up of the Jeeps. Uh, I mean, also too, I can't afford a Rubicon, so that's another reason why I like building up Jeeps because I like throwing the stuff in that uh, that I want to be uh, put in there, and and that's one of the things that is kind of fun about uh, about Jeeps anyway is kind of making it your own. Uh, doing things to it. I mean, it still still may be off the shelf things, but you can choose if you want to use an e locker, an ARB, or uh, maybe uh, uh, something that uh, isn't a selectable locker, which I think is a horrible idea. But people do it. Right, right. And then, uh, yeah, I put a, a I wrapped it myself the first time maybe about five years ago. Oh, that's interesting. And then uh, had this uh, it was a flag. Here. And they had this flag put in it, just a full wrap too. And I just put my my emblem over the door there. Mm-hmm. But, uh, and then on the hood, I have a a Celtic symbol and it and a little writing on it says "I lead, you follow" in Gaelic. So this kind of goes back to my heritage, my Irish heritage. Mm-hmm. Um, and then and then the, actually that brings us to the the whole kilt thing. Um, now, yeah. uh, I think everybody knows what a kilt is, but uh, g- give people the, the nickel, I mean, this, is, this is probably a poor choice of words, give people the nickel tour about what a, what a uh, kilt is. Right. Uh, my ancestors, and this Scottish, most people think of it as Scotland, Scottish, mm-hmm. but Ireland, they did too, many, many years ago, and yes, it looks like a skirt, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's not, and, and even in Egyptian times, they called it a tunic, so... It's uh, just a uh, kind of a back to my heritage. I had just got back from Ireland from a vacation. Ireland is Scotland, actually. And uh, a friend of mine has made a comment about wearing a kilt over there. I mean, yeah, I'd wear a kilt. Why don't you do it? It was almost a dare, I guess. Why don't you do it riding a, in your Jeep? I'm like, well, okay, you dare me. Okay, here we go. <laughs> that was maybe actually when we first started this, six, seven years ago, when I started doing it, it just, it just stuck. So it's it's nice in the summertime, but miserable in the winter. Let's just oh, say yeah. that. So, uh, <laughs> right. so the the common question is underwear or no? Right. Well, if you did, it would be a, it would be a skirt. So you gotta gotta be traditional <laughs> and go with the with the heritage. So oh, absolutely. Nope. Right. <laughs> No, no half assing if you're going to do it. So, uh, has right, right. has there been a time that a kilt was not uh, a good thing to wear? Uh, I mean, something that was. <laughs> yes. I would think working on the Jeep it kind of gives new meaning to the uh, pl- pl- uh, plumber's crack, but uh, that would be a, a, probably a stiff yeah, breeze. We, <laughs> we did a ride down in uh, Arkansas, and uh, I was leaning over trying to help. I have a little bit of decent me- uh, mechanical ability. So I'm able to help the people get off the trails. And I was leaning over doing something and a good breeze came and I didn't realize it, but everything went up and I heard all these laughs when I looked back <laughs> and everyone was looking at me. So yeah, I got everybody's attention <laughs> accidentally on that one. <laughs> it uh, be a little interesting sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't matter if it's <laughs> really cold out. There's there's no underwear, but you, you, you just wear the kilt. And do you wear the kilt for all the ta- trail rides? Yes, yeah. Now, I do, if it's real muddy or real wet out, I have about 15 of them, so I don't want to get them ruined. Some of them are real thick or eight yards of wool. Some are a lot thinner, so summers and winters. But uh, And then if it's real cold, I just wear these real long socks. And uh, they go up way up to my knees, and maybe some flashings on there, and mm-hmm. keep them keep them warm. But yeah, it keeps me good enough warm. 
Very cool. Well, that's neat, and uh, uh, <laughs> certainly you, certainly stands out. Uh, pardon the pun. Uh, yeah. With somebody, uh, <laughs> somebody wearing a kilt on a on a trail ride. Is there any other traditional uh, outfit uh, that goes with that? I mean, and the little hat, uh, maybe some bag of pipes. You got anything else in the Jeep? That's uh... right. <laughs> Every now and then, I, I wear a, a utility kilt most of the time. That has the, the pockets on the sides. And when I don't, I wear more of a traditional. I have a sporin, and that's your little bag that hangs down in, in front of oh, you. Oh yeah. I keep my radio in there or my cell phone when I'm or my wallet and stuff like that. But, uh, yes, I got different kinds and sometimes we'll have an event where we'll dress up. So I do have dress up ones also. So, so a little bit of everything. So we often have uh, Jeep talk show million dollar ideas here and, and it, it may not be a million dollar idea, but it's up there. Uh, you got to learn if you don't already know how, uh, to play bagpipes. And that's how you, uh, bring everybody <laughs> to the driver's meeting. Is you you play the bagpipes, right. which which actually would probably ca- cause people to go the opposite way. But you know, if they knew that the the drivers' meeting that was your your signature, uh, play the bagpipes yeah. and bring them in. And here's the drivers' meeting. If you don't listen, I'm going to play it some more. <laughs> I do have a CD in there with some bagpipes on it. And sometimes oh, I play that on the trail. It was a good <laughs> idea then, <laughs> right? But it is interesting because a lot of parades and especially funerals, you see. It kilts all the time, but yet when you're out there on the trail somewhere, well, I get some pretty good looks, and some of them are not too happy. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it's, it's interesting. You just try not to focus on everybody staring at you. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a good hook. I mean, I think it's a good uh, a good advertising hook. You know, and, and and you actually use that in the the name of your business, Kilted Trail Guide. So. Uh, do, does anybody else uh, wear wear kilts? Do you do you find that some people come out and they wear their kilts? Is it uh, is it a, a, a kilt fest, so to speak? A couple times, a really uh, nice gesture. It was kind of fun. Uh, maybe a couple years ago, my birthday, we did a birthday ride down in in Kentucky, and all the guys that came to my birthday ride, they all wore kilts. So we all took pictures. We all had kilts on. It was, it was kind of fun. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Now, uh, okay, yeah, and I did see the one. Yes, sir. Yeah, and, and women, uh, do, do women ever wear kilts? I mean, I, I think that's a no-no uh, officially, but uh, these days you, you never know uh, if, uh, if if a woman may, uh, may come in out there with a kilt. Have you seen any women wearing kilts? No, I sure haven't. I haven't seen them, but most of them realize it's, it's not the most practical thing, jumping in and out of a, a real tall Jeep. And windy days, especially in Moab. That was a good oh, one. God, it oh, was very windy. windy. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to spot and use my hand signals while holding the kilt down. Yeah, I have, so, I have dust. Man. I have so much dust, red dust in my, my Jeep. I can just well imagine that uh, the shower was running red whenever you uh, got into the, the shower with the, the, the open air <laughs> kilt thing. Um, okay, so let me ask you. Let me ask you something about the the business now. Uh, when you do, you find that your customers are uh, individuals or groups or clubs or uh, are all all of the above. I had kind of a mix. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, like Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion, uh, a whole group from this state or that state, they get in touch with me, and I'll do a ride just specifically for them. Uh, for, so mostly that one, but now all the rest of the rides seem to be just individuals, and and it's really cool because they're they're not just from here in Cincinnati. In fact, not a whole lot are from here in Cincinnati. I'm getting them from Michigan and Canada and Massachusetts, and it's really really cool to hear how far some of these people go to to come out and, and ride with us. It's, it's really neat. Okay, so the the rides that you do, uh, I don't know how that works. Do you go uh, to their area, or do you pick a place maybe that uh, that they want to go to where they want to do the trail ride, and then you both travel to that area? How does that work? Yeah, I do have a lot of them that request, hey, will you come down to here and do a ride? But um, uh, some of it's kind of a mix. Uh, like I did one in Kentucky, and that's where the guy from Massachusetts came all the way down. Kind of interesting. I did one in Georgia. And I guess the furthest one out, somebody from Canada came all the way down. But like, for instance, uh, Moab last year, a gentleman from, that lived in California, we got in touch with us. I have a page and a, a group and everything, and, and all my rides are listed in there. And 
and uh, he got in touch with us, and he met us there. So, yeah, we don't, don't transport anybody. A lot of times we like to convoy, because that's half the Jeep fun. Mm-hmm. You know, all a big line of Jeeps going from place to place. But for the most part, we'll meet them. Uh, Alabama, there's a real nice gentleman down there. We, we've met quite a few times, actually, and he lives right there by Stony Lonesome, so he jumps in with us and rides. So it's kind of neat. They just kind of... Everybody comes from all over the place, and we all meet at one location and have some fun. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what is the process? Uh, that you, you go to your Facebook page, or how how does how do people contact you? Uh, is it uh, you have a trail ride and people can join in, or they can contact you about uh, uh, having their own trail ride, uh, individual group type thing? How does what is the process? Yeah, sometimes I. I Post around just different groups about, uh, like, I, I using Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion as an example. Uh, yeah, we're going to be there. We're going to be doing eight different rides. And somebody maybe see that from, say, Illinois. And maybe they'll contact us. Hey, how about leading a ride for just our group? And, but other times, people will just get on to our Kill the Trail Guide page or group. And uh, there's rides listed there. And, and they'll see when they see that they like, maybe Cumberland Gap or Drummond Island or some of these neat places and say, wow, that, that's pretty cool. I'd like to go there. And then there's all the instructions in there how to get a hold of us and, and uh, sign up for it. And then we make a group message and a little bit of a process. I think we definitely got it down to a science now. So mm-hmm. get everyone, so everyone has all the correct information so nobody's missed. And uh, yeah, we see, it, we see it, everybody at the place and, and have some good fun. So, uh, does the number of individuals affect the price, or is it a flat a flat rate for uh, everybody? The different ones are the number of individuals don't necessarily. It's mostly the distance. Now, granted, this is distance for me. So, obviously, Moab is probably the uh, the furthest. Well, actually, I have Rubicon Trail in twenty twenty four coming up, so that would be the furthest. But most of them are about the same. Just those. Two or three really long ones out there are a little bit different price, but all the other ones are, are pretty close to the same thing from German Island all the way down to Alabama, Wind Rock here in the 1st of June. So all those are just about the same mm-hmm. same price. It's just, just kind of how far it is, uh, how hard it is. It's just a very easy ride, it's maybe possibly scenic. Well, then it's a lot less work, but if it's a tough one, I'm going to be walking miles and miles and miles and, and winching and and I really want to give them a, a one-on-one with each individual person so I know, okay, that's going to be a lot of work, so that one's a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Right, so or if there are permits involved, I have to get like Moab to get BLM permits and some extra costs with all that, so yeah, it kind of depends on where we're going. Right. So, uh, do you have a limit on the number of uh, Jeeps that uh, come out to your event? Yes, yes. Uh, well, let's say like Windrock, I can, I can maybe take, uh, say, this many. So maybe 10 or 15, if it's going to be a, a tough one. Uh, if it's going to be easy, I can maybe take it up to maybe 20. Uh, Drummond Island is a little bit easier up there. Uh, but like even Smoky Mountain, I have about 30 on those rides. Mm-hmm. But Colorado and Moab, a little bit less. So it's like, let's try to stay around 10, maybe 12. Mm-hmm. So, yes, it kind of depends on the, the difficulty, what we're going to run into, how tough it's going to be, is uh, we'll kind of keep a, uh, the, you know, the maximums there. Mm-hmm. We've never not sold a ride out, so we sell every one of them out. So, a lot of times people, you know, try to get in. That's what, like, 2024 Colorado and Rubicon are already sold out. They're already completely full. And that's, like... Way far away. Well, congratulations! That's going to make you feel great uh, that you don't have to worry about uh, filling up that thing because that's that's a pretty good cost for you just to get out there. Right? Yeah, trailering out there and it's it's pretty good. We're going to overland uh, real time, mm-hmm. and we're doing another one out there too. But uh, yeah, so um, it all kind of depends on on the ride and and what we feel safe. It's all about safety because. To be honest with you, I'm not out here to try to make a living. This isn't uh, making a living. This is keeping my cheap alive. I'm doing something I really love. I've been to so many places. Just seeing their faces when we go to some of these places is that part. Right. You know, they're 
wow, look at that. That is amazing. Thank you for showing me that. I, yeah. I didn't know that was there. So, so basically, uh, you are uh, having your passion uh, paid for. Uh, I mean, you uh, obviously, you're doing things to help, but uh, it, it is fun uh, showing people how to do things and seeing the look on their face when they do it. Do you do you ever run across uh, an individual or individuals that are going, uh, "Hey, man, we need a little more excitement in this. With this uh, this flat trail riding isn't uh, isn't what I what I was uh, interested in, and I, I want some massive boulders and uh, uh, axle breakers and and stuff." Right, absolutely. That's, that definitely happens. The best part is in our description, we we'll describe a ride, the difficulty level, and everything about it. Uh, some people can obviously message me and ask, maybe even more specific, we might do it. You know, I've only done this and that. Can I do that? So we, some of those, so we try to get everyone on the ride that is really equipped for that ride. Mm-hmm. But once in a while, you'll get one that shows up that, okay, this is maybe a little over their head, but you know, I'm not going to put them at safety, so we all, but sometimes I have a, a second person that maybe will help me lead and Maybe take a little harder group, and I'll take an easier group. Or we all tone it down a little bit. All out there to have fun, but most and some of the times, you know, like even Moab uh, sends me things. There's there's different. You can go here. And this is the bypass, or you can go here. This is a little bit harder, but it just goes around you know, the corner, like you guys saw out there too. Yep. Not for ones that are one a little bit more. Okay, guys, you can go right here. I'll spot you, but. For the most part, yeah, we all stick together, and it's the, real important for me to, to go over each individual person that's signed up to make sure they're not in over their heads. Because some of them, you've been wheeling with them a long time, you didn't realize that they're extremely afraid of heights. <laughs> that is that last year at, at Colorado. <laughs> it was like, oh, no. So we, we had to go over the top to, to make sure he felt safe and get him through a few of those spots. But... Uh, yeah, for the most part, everybody is set going into these rides or definitely know what they're getting into. And, and uh, we've already looked at them, checked them over, and they're, they're good to go for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Hell's Revenge was uh, w- was probably not a good place for people that had a, a fear of heights. It's not like it was a sheer drop-off, but it was uh, very easy to see that if you, you got uh, 10 or 15 feet either side of some of those, uh, I guess they would be called fins, uh, that uh, it wasn't right. going to be a pleasant trip down. <laughs> well, that's very true. And truly, it's probably the worst one I've been on was Black Bear Pass in Colorado. Uh-huh. That is so steep that I literally have to get out and I, I pretty much walk everybody through the first two or three switchbacks. There's a lot of walking for me, but I don't know. Just, just to see their appreciation. They know that I didn't have to do that, but I need to get... It just makes me feel good. Well, it's, it's bad for business when you lose somebody over the edge, you know? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so, you need repeat customers. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, <laughs> don't want to run them off. Now, you know, I don't know. Uh, uh, you probably don't know this, uh, but uh, I have a, um, uh, a problem with Jeep clubs or clubs of, uh, of any sort. It just seems like it is uh, full of drama and often uh, spirals out of uh, out of control with uh, uh, people's uh, personalities and egos. Uh, so, uh, have you run across uh, any issues? And of course, we're not going to name any groups or names. But have you run across yeah. any issues with Jeep clubs as opposed to maybe uh, friends that are going on the trail ride or people that just come into your trail rides? But whenever you do a club specific trail ride, absolutely. That's that's definitely one unfortunate thing about these Jeep clubs. I, I completely agree with you. Some of them are just nothing but drama. And, and us, uh, if you come up to an obstacle, you know, I don't, I don't want anybody to feel that they have to do it because they're going to make fun of because that's sometimes what happened to mm-hmm. So no, I, even on my, my group, it is the Facebook automatically doesn't allow people to post in there. I mean, it's all about rides. This is all about rides. So no spams, no people getting on talking bad about other groups, and, and we have to remove people if it's caused too much drama. But for the most part, we've been very fortunate. We haven't had any of that. A lot of the groups do. When we first started as a paid guide service, there was um, there was a lot of uh, drama back then. It was kind of unheard of, especially on the East Coast. And now, wow, there's, there's quite a few of them out there. 
But uh, so far, you know, we've pretty much stayed away from all that. I, I think a lot of it comes down to our personalities. We're, we're, we're just way different, much easier to get along with. I think that's maybe one good reason why we've turned out so successful so far. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We just get along with everybody, and, and we really don't have any enemies that I know of. <laughs> don't speak up if you know any of them. <laughs> no, no, but, no. Uh, but yeah, I, I just I was just curious about that because I know there's there can be a lot of drama and also too I, sometimes I think it doesn't have anything to do with you it has to do with uh, them uh, jockeying for position inside the club so they may be pointing stuff out to be the expert uh, and uh, oh I'm gonna straighten out this uh, this so-called trail guide <laughs> just so I can look good to the, all these other people because I want to be president or treasurer or i don't know uh negative sneeho or whatever the 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 thing is and if you've got a jeep club and you enjoy it and more power to you i've never been in a club uh i've just found that uh just looking online and just my general feelings about a club uh i, I got a jeep and uh, actually the the jeep talk show team members uh pick on me about hey is it the jeep talk show a club now because we're going on trail rides and doing my butts and nope <laughs> we are not a club right. never will be <laughs> yeah it's become like high school we're so clicky yeah. and and everything right so far ours is we're all about business we're all about this is what it is we're, we're trail guys we're, we don't do any meet and greets we'll sometimes go to some sure but we don't set any up or we don't do any of that we just hey we're going here let me show you guys for this place you'll love it and that's what we're all about just showing people some really awesome things they can do in their jeep that they can't do in a Prius. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, do you find that the majority of the people that attend your uh, your your trail guides are newbies or uh, newbies to moderate, or do you actually get some hardcore people? That's a good one. Yeah, I would say most of them are easy to easy medium. Yeah, I would say so because, in my opinion, if if you get a real hardcore wheeler. Mm, they tend to maybe don't need a, a trail guide. They don't yeah. need somebody to show them how to winch and show them how to uh, get them off a little predicament stuck on a rock or, or kind of a, a dangerous spot. Well, they're, they're pretty well seasoned. They could do it. And, and they tend to maybe like to go in smaller groups, two or three of their, their friends. But uh, I guess I would say the you know, majority of ours are, are beginner or medium. They're, mediums, they, they know their Jeep. They're, they're pretty good with it. They've been some places, but they want to go to even more places. So that's kind of where we come in and, and show them some new stuff. And so, probably more easy to easy medium. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, that's what I figured it was, but I, th- I thought it'd be best to just to ask to make sure. Um, so uh, I received uh, a couple of emails from people after getting back from uh, Easter Jeep Safari. I mean, I've uh, I'd, I've made no uh, no uh, excursions of knowing exactly what I was doing out there. It was my first time going, <laughs> and I think that's one of the reasons why people were reaching out to me is saying, "Hey, what do I need? What do I need to do to my Jeep before I can go to uh, Moab?" You know, do, what what size lift, what size tires, uh, yes. what gears, and all the rest of that stuff. Uh, I, I'm sure you get these questions all the time for from newbies. Oh uh, my goodness, yes. So, uh, how how do you respond? Yes, I get. Wow, if you only knew how many Facebook messages I get, I get blown up so much every day. I get quite a few. Uh, it's it's tough, but I mean that's that's a part of this. They're looking at me because I've been to these places and. So I gotta, I gotta get back with them, and I gotta take a moment, kind of talk with them, find out what they got, and and explain. The, the really awesome thing about a Jeep is these these things will go a lot more places you would imagine. That's mm-hmm. that's definitely for sure. So if you want to go here, you don't necessarily need this, this, and this, but this and this would be even more beneficial to you. Mm-hmm. But uh, you want to go to this park. Well, this park, okay, well, now you need a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So kind of specific to where they're asking about and uh, what they are. Now, granted, I've taken a, uh, quite a few that are completely stock Jeep. And, and we'll be going somewhere pretty interesting, some, some pretty good park. But then I'll put them right behind me because then that way I get them the most possible help. Uh, we did. We had a couple like that uh, land between the lakes uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, just give them a little bit of extra care and, and attention, and, and it all works out. But yes, I do get a lot, and and that's okay. I'm definitely not complaining because it's better. Sometimes people may be embarrassed to ask it 
in a group message because we'll set up a group exactly. message everyone going to this particular event. And, you know, if I'm kind of new and I'm embarrassed, you know, uh, how do I turn my lockers on? You know, don't maybe just private message me, which is great because then, you know, they can get all those questions out. Then we can get you the, the ride and they can have just as much fun as everybody else and feel safe doing it. Mm-hmm. How do I get it in four-wheel drive? How do I get it in four-wheel low? I've tried pulling up on a handle. It won't go in four-wheel low. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah right. it doesn't seem like it's not the little knob that you turn and there's no mechanical linkage to the knob it's all electronic it's just really easy to turn that little knob well that that's not a four-wheel drive i mean the real four-wheel drives have right. mechanical linkage in my mind right and if i if i take the air out of my tires well how am i gonna put it back yeah, exactly <laughs> that's that is a very reasonable question <laughs> right right <laughs> and i was that way one time too and and I kind of went through this by myself and then kind of had to learn the hard way. And when I first started, when I first got this Jeep and I went off road one time, then I would put uh, little messages in a group and say, anybody want to go? And then that's kind of how it started. Next thing you know, I'm leading and I have never really been able to not lead a ride. Sometimes it gets kind of... Oh, I bet, you would look, I bet you would look forward just to being an, <laughs> uh, an occupant on the trail, not not showing everybody what to do. Exactly. <laughs> and I've tried a couple of times, like, hey, I'm just going to get behind somebody. I'm going to follow. I'm going to pretend I don't know what I'm doing. And you get there and like, hey, do you mind leading? Wait, they know who I am. Like, oh, hey, okay. you know what you're doing. We need a trail lead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes leaders have to be leaders because uh, of who they are, and, and uh, uh, nobody else will do it, or nobody can step up to the challenge. So, uh, I want to ask you something. Really, I want to ask you something really quick. We were talking about uh, 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 talking about um, uh, clubs and whatnot, and and actually, clubs are very good for newbies for what you're talking about, sure. depending on the club right. and so on and so forth. But if you're if you're a non joiner like me. Uh, then uh, getting getting on a trail ride uh, like with uh, with the kilted uh, trail guide here, uh, it might be the way to go and get some of that one on one experience. But anyway, I, I noticed that you had done a post, uh, and I don't normally see things uh, like this and, and talk about them, but I think it's important. Uh, I, I saw a post. I think it was back on uh, that you made back on September uh, of 2022, where you had a a really negative situation. Uh, with a, a trail ride, and uh, it obviously uh, you don't have to mention any names or groups or anything like that. But I was really surprised that um, if a if something's closed, <laughs> that, what was it? Uh, the uh, was it Nemo Finding Nemo? Was that the, was that the name of the trail ride? Uh, that, was, that was closed, and uh, you had to come up with an alternative thing. But they but people were pissed off basically, and I, I don't understand. And it didn't sound like it was anything under your control. Right. What it ended up being is there's a really neat train tunnel. It's about a mile long, and it's down in Tennessee, mm-hmm. and Nemo Tunnel. So a group uh, hired me to, to take them there. Well, I, I went down and did a scouting ride because I, I've been there a bunch before, but I knew that they were possibly going to close that because it was an accident there previously. And sure enough, the railroad company said, uh-uh, get off my property. Right. There any lawsuits and closed it. So... Kind of, uh, maybe a month or two in advance, and last ditch effort of stitch effort to uh, come up with a ride. Okay, guys, they closed it, uh, and this would be for Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion. Here's all of our options. And that kind of goes back to that one you were talking about, some like this, some like that. Well, the beginning ride was going to be road and gravel and a tunnel, a little bit of a trail afterwards. So that same people... And now they want this ride. Well, now some of them want this real hard and some of them want this real soft. And it was kind of a mess to begin with. So we were able to handle it. Uh, we, we come up on tra- trail traffic, and which happens almost every time you're out. And I'm sure it did to you guys, too. Every time you're off road, you, you're going to meet other people. And sometimes it's a very skinny trail. Some have to go around you or somebody's turning around. So the, the other group just flat out refused, even though we had a better way to get them uh, out of the way and, and move forward. We had a pretty good-sized group that day, like 25. So it became real quick early to me that, oh, they are flat out refusing to move and do anything. 
they can't stay there all night, obviously. So, like, all right, my partner went down there and kind of just talked to them, kind of keep them calm. And I immediately went to the back and started turning all of our guys around. So, so let me ask you. Let me ask you a quick question. Yeah. Why wouldn't they move? Were, were they going to go off a, a cliff or something, or were they just literally? Well, it sounds like they were being terri- is, territorial, which I don't understand. Yes, the other thing is our my line. We were pretty close, right on the edge. To where theirs, they had enough to. Uh, it's like it's not Jenga. It's almost that game where you kind of move all the pieces around to get it all to fit just right. Mm-hmm. So. As I do that, I walk down and, okay, this one can go here, that one can go here, this one can go here. I had a, a little map in my head, boom, 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 all can be turned around. But those one individual over there that, oddly enough, he used to be you know, the president of a group that they, they kicked him out of now. But Oh, but that kind of makes sense. Kinda, <laughs> all right. He just kind of flat out, no, uh-uh, we are not moving. By that time... Oh, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes. Uh, your time is lapsing. We're losing time. Mm-hmm. And another group came up behind them. Well, now there are so many. I don't even know. I, what, do they, what do they see down there? I was on radio communication with those, that second group. Uh, somehow they found what channel we were on, so we're talking back and forth. So it really came down to, well, uh, we can sit here and complain. We, we, we can throw a fit. You know, try to call the police to come. But hey, we got to get off this trail. We got to get off this trail safe. And with my line, we had to back each individual one up, maybe about an eighth of a mile, flip them around, and get them out. So the really good thing is, I had a night ride that night too. So we got everyone off the trail, back to the location, and I was able to do the night ride without being late. And they that first group, they only missed the last ooh, maybe third of the trail. So just a bit of the trail we had to turn around and, and do the rest of it. But yeah, so it's just with these things with like any kind of business you're gonna have perfect rides. And then some, you're going to have trail traffic. Well, that, but that's the nature of going off-road. You, you, nothing's ever exactly. perfect. Th- something is going to happen. So let me, let me go back to this, this individual like that was... Like tree or something. Yeah, yeah. Let me go back to this individual that was uh, refusing to move. So this was some sort of vendetta against you or your business or something. It had to have been. I mean, it was either this is this is my trail. It's Bob's trail. <laughs> Taking a line from Twister. <laughs> it's Bob's road. Yeah. <laughs> or well, which which I don't understand. It seems like that's not uh, not jeepers, not jeeping. Was this guy driving a Toyota? You can be honest. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, he was a jeep. <laughs> He's kind of has a, a reputation and. And there's definitely, you're exactly right, you hit the nail on the head, there's more to that story. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I knew who he was, and he knew who I was, and and that was in the whole transition of why I left the the sponsor that I had, uh, there's some practices that I didn't agree with, and he was a part of that, and Yeah. It's a, it's hard to imagine that a company that is in the pro, in it to make a profit would do anything that would be negative. I mean, it's it's hard to believe that a, a sponsor would be anything but. I mean, they can cut ties, but in a business way and not be vindictive. Uh, it, it it just surprises me. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I, I think one of the things I'm finding, and I haven't had any negative experiences with anybody. Uh, or any companies, but uh, I, what I'm finding is is that personalities don't go away, e- even when it's a business. Sometimes it gets worse. I think uh, it, potentially it gets worse because they think they're a pretty big deal, and uh, you should be you know kowtowing to them because of their profitability and uh, how important their product is to the off road world. Uh, again, I have right. not I have not experienced that, but I, I, from some of the stories and some of the stuff that I'm hearing, it's it 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 it, it just really doesn't seem to matter if it's a club or a business. Uh, you can run a, a, a run against uh, run into bad apples uh, in in all areas. Right, and and honestly, this that guy wasn't the the former sponsor, but he is a good old buddy and and. Yeah, Although kinda, that's what I got out of it. It wasn't a sponsor, but it was right. somebody that uh, right. maybe had the sponsor's ear is the way I was taking it. Exactly. And then those are, I'm a perfectionist. I want every ride to be so perfect. So, of course, I go home. Now, granted, I turn right around and do another ride, and, and the people on the next ride and, and the rest of the weekend, 
They didn't know anything happened. They didn't see anything different in my personality. But then, yeah, it's just business, and you and you have new customers yeah. or the same customers, and you you need to right. keep that uh, keep that whole thing up and going. I mean, just let the let the stuff roll, roll off your back like uh, water on a duck. Right. So then I I beat myself up about it. And and if you saw all you probably saw all the I mean pages and pages of people saying all nice things, and it, that really brought me back. Like, uh, yeah, I'm definitely. I definitely, definitely appreciate my stuff out there. And, and that, we met Jeeps, but it very well could have been a downed tree. I mean, I carry a chainsaw, but could have been a big tree, no matter what. Sometimes it happens. Oh, a washed out road. Sorry, you went this far. Well, now we've got to turn around and go back. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you, you probably cars, you, know? you probably set expectations as well. I would think that before the trail ride, I mean, there's acts of God and there's uh, acts of assholes. Uh, pardon the uh, the French there. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that you never right. know. You never know what's going to happen. But that's part of the adventure. So yeah, I was yeah. just curious about that. Uh, it was a, a really long post that you made, and you could tell that you were very. Um, uh, emotional about it. it it bothered you and I, i'm sure it bothered you not because of somebody not moving but because it impacted your customers that's that's what i got out of it right right because yeah you know, just like i said i want everything every time to be perfect and i know it's not going to be there's going to be rainy days there's going to be muddy days there's going to be traffic there's, there's going to be everything mm-hmm. that's, the, that's the interesting thing about this i'm going to run into mechanicals to, to, to even dogs heaven and, you know, fits or something. You know, I'm always going to have something out there. and just being able to react to it, and, and maybe that's my, my Problem. military background. Problem solving. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, uh, exactly. And, and, I, and I bring this up because, uh, well, for two reasons. One, the club aspect that I was talking about, and also, two, whenever you uh, make a date to go off and do something like this, especially if somebody that you're you're paying for, you have to be reasonable in your expectations. Uh, I think a lot of people are, and I think they they understand. But if you're brand new to jeeping, uh, you may may view this as a Disney ride, where you know you paid your ticket, you get on the ride, and uh, the the ride doesn't break. But that's not what jeeping right. is. That's not what going off road is. So, that, so uh, and that one one little ride last year, I've had six hundred and twenty four G's last year. So of that, what ten fifteen of them in that one group. Not even the whole group, actually. Just in that one group, we're unhappy, which, hey, it is what it is, and just make everything better the next time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you, you just, it's yeah, you just, better. it happens. You, you go past it, and uh, it's a, it's a, a risk that you run anytime. Actually, anytime you step outside. Uh, but, so uh, just yeah, look at it that right. way. All right, so uh, you know how the kids love the social media these days. Uh, I know we've talked about right. uh, finding you on Facebook, uh, Kilted Trail Guide. I think you just do a search for that. Of course, we'll have a link in our show notes uh, for this uh, this interview episode. Yes, sir. Yep, we have a YouTube channel, which I'll be pretty famous with you. I'm not real good at throwing those in there. I make a lot of videos, and then we kind of look through them, and uh, you know, then I try to put them on. I've been trying to get better at that. I'm so focused on all these rides and mm-hmm. and, and well, the important things. All the stuff. <laughs> right. But we do have Instagram and uh, Kilted Trail Guide and YouTube channel Kilted Trail Guide and uh, page or group. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got we got a lot of stuff out there. Everybody get a hold of us. And where is the place that that people go to see the trail rides you have coming, or to contact you about uh, maybe uh, individual trail rides or group trail rides? Is it Facebook, Instagram, uh, Kilted, anywhere? Yes, Facebook, uh, Kilted Trail Guide Group. Uh, my page has all my, my my information and all the basic stuff. The group actually has all the specific rides, when they are, everything about each individual ride and where we're going. And and then we do have a uh, chat room, too. And a lot of different uh, shots and, and different people are talking in currently. So we can get in there and, and watch, and people may, hey, you ever go here? You want to go here? Could you go here? So we kind of pick people up from there, too. Mm-hmm. Do you ever go to uh, Texas? I was just thinking that <laughs> the other day. I'm like, hmm, I pretty well got this this year filled up. Thinking maybe in, in the colder months for us, you know, snow here and maybe decent in Texas. But, yeah, we were looking to – I just did that the other day. I was looking for a couple sp- spots down there by Dallas. Mm-hmm. We might be heading down that way sometime in the – the winter time, perhaps. I haven't really nailed that down yet, but 
definitely been thinking about that. Absolutely. That's one place we have not gone yet. So there's uh, there's several places, uh, two of which I've been to, Barnwell, which is uh, just uh, a little east of Dallas, and uh, Hidden uh, Falls Adventure Park, which uh, we have our right. uh, our annual Jeep Talk Show uh, Texas events uh, there, and uh, uh, right. it's been in June. And uh, I, I, it's now, don't get me wrong, uh, Hidden Falls isn't anything like Moab, it's anything like Colorado, or so I hear. Uh, but because uh, we had a group go to go to Colorado um, about six months ago, and uh, so, it, but it, it's very nice, uh, and uh, that might be a place that you want to look at. Um, they're uh, they're very laid back there. I don't want to say they're they're negative to customers, but they're not they're not all that interested in. Um, they don't get excited about large groups. <laughs> they, right. they don't they don't seem to care. That's why I say laid back. Uh, but it's a very pretty sure. park. A lot of shelves. A lot of uh, uh, limestone uh, type things. There's really not uh, any mud or anything. Uh, I, I would assume you're not a big uh, mud fan. Uh, most people aren't. It, it, the, what, I, and I've I've said this before. Mud is a lot of fun. It's the cleanup that sucks. <laughs> right, and it gets into places you don't want. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, two types of wheelers: they're the West Coast wheelers and the East Coast. East Coast, yeah, we're used to mountains, trees, mud, rock. Yeah, so we're, it's definitely. We see it about every day, every time we go out. <laughs> it's pretty nasty. Well, yeah, you know, in mud, it wouldn't be a great thing to wear a kilt uh, with, especially if the tires uh, weren't being covered by the uh, fender wells and you're doorless. <laughs> right. <laughs> Exactly. Hey, honey, can you help me out here? I got to clean something. <laughs> right. Dealing with the doors off is a little bit interesting with the kilt, right? Yeah, I would think that ha- having leg. having your leg hung out on a peg would be uh, interesting right. as well. <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. Well, that's really cool. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the, go out there and get uh, take a kilt, if nothing else, uh, to get in on the shot there uh, with Jeff. Jeff, thank you a lot for being with us tonight. It sounds like you got a, a great time. Thank you for being so forthcoming about your uh, your negative uh, uh, negative uh, issue with uh, that guy in the Toyota, or maybe he was in a Prius. Maybe that's why he couldn't right. move. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, thank Absolutely. you. Thank Thanks you very much. A, yes, sir. Hey, thanks again to Jeffrey Foley, the Kilted Trail Guide. Visit his Facebook page right now. It's at facebook.com slash Kilted Trail Guide. You'll be able to see that right in our show notes for this episode, episode 838. Coming up next week, Justin Murray of the Great Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion. Yeah, we've uh, we've spoken with Justin relatively recently, about a month or so ago, and uh, this is just so exciting. We wanted to have him back and tell you more about the Great Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion. If you've never been, you need to go. Uh, if you've uh, been before, it's time to go again. Hey, are you an active Tic Tac poster? <laughs> or maybe Instagram. When you select stickers for your post, do a search for Jeep Talk Show. You'll find some animated stickers that you can use for your post. You know, the Jeep Talk Show has been in production for 13 years now. We started with one episode a week, and now we're doing five. We are on a single radio station every Monday in Florida. Radio is an AM, like you remember when you got your first vehicle and all it had was an AM radio? Yeah, you could listen to us on that. Well, not back then. It's not time travel or anything, but but you know what I mean. <laughs> we'll be expanding this uh, to radio stations across the country. As a business owner, this is your opportunity to be a sponsor for a Jeep show that, has mil- that would have millions of people uh, listening to the show. Contact us about sponsorship on this show on the radio, jeeptalkshow.com slash contact, and we'll be happy to talk to you about your sponsorship. And that's a wrap for today's episode of the Jeep Talk Show. I want to give a big thank you to our special guests for joining us today and sharing their knowledge and experience with the Jeep community. We truly appreciate your time and insights. Remember, we have five episodes a week, and it's understandable if you've missed some past episodes. You can always find all those past episodes on your favorite podcast platform uh, or on our website. With over 800 episodes, there is plenty of Jeep Talk Show to entertain you for hours, especially if you're traveling across country to uh, going an off-road site. You can listen to the Jeep Talk Show for hours. You know, if you have any Jeep-related questions or topics you'd like to cover, like for us to cover, uh, feel free to reach out on our social media uh, or via email. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact to find out all the ways that you can connect with us. Until next time, keep on jeeping and we'll see you on the trails. Broadcasting since 2010.
Now it's the time to thank our Patreon subscribers. So again, you know, you guys know how this works. I pronounce the name or pronunci- I pronunciate, pronunciate, pronunciate the name as best I can. And if it doesn't look like it's going to be anywhere close, I'll just say the last letter of the last name. <laughs> so, uh, and I and I hope I, and I apologize ahead of time. So, uh, Ryan Gurley, Dusty Dunn, Rick Turner, David Greenwald, uh, John Wooden, Adam Poole, Keith Brenner. James Holston, David Key, Brett Mendoza, Andrew Prather, Josh Norris, Joshua Southwick. It's so strange that those two Joshes came in right after one one another. This and this is the order in which they've uh, uh, become Patreon subscribers. Uh, Brett Smith, Matthew Heline, uh, Highline, uh, Julianne from Wranglehur. I have no idea. It's it's D. It, it, the, the last the, the last name last letter is D. First letter is D. Gary Perkins, Andrea Job. Uh, James T. Oh, James T. Kirk. I was watching Star Trek last night. Kevin Briggs, Mark, and I have, you know, Mark, you have to say this for me sometime, but he goes by Zabo. Uh, Hunter Clark, Randy Francis, uh, Larry Jeep and Moe, Steve O, Craig Daly. I'm gonna, I'm, you know, instead of Steve O, I'm going to say uh, Steve Illinois. Uh, <laughs> Don Sw- Swinner, Swimmer, Swinner. I want to say I always want to say swimmer so bad. It's uh, uh, it is S W, but it's like S winner. Roger uh, Madro, uh, Chip Holmes, John Lee, Bill Vavarez, and he, and he will remind you because I, I mention it often. Our very first Patreon subscriber, Matthew Johnson. Thank you guys for being Patreon subscribers. And I've got a huge ass. <laughs>